This video is part of the Commercial Building Electrical Design Series. Uh, we're talking about power distribution design and uh, we want to continue looking how to put all the components together, which we've been talking up to this point, um, together into a power plan and how that look, what that looks like in a, a complete set of power plans or electrical design. So to do that, we want to take a look at a, a project. So this is a project that is an addition to an existing building. Um, this is uh, for a, a church where they, they already have a sanctuary, but they want to do some additions uh, for a foyer and some different things like that. So uh, we want to look at the electrical part of that design and see how it works and, and how it relates to the existing, existing part of the design. So here we've, we've pulled out the E-sheets, which is part of the overall plans. It's just the electrical part. And we start with the, the first sheet in the series, which should have the electrical symbol legend. And again, if we look at this, um, again, just looking at just the stuff that pertains to power design, um, uh, we see here we have our power panels, and again, hatched for 480, solid for 208 and come over to our outlets and we have our general uh, receptacle outlets these are at 18 inches if it's filled in it's at 46 inches uh, if it doesn't have the little divots on it it's a ceiling mount and then we have our tags for weatherproof isolated ground ground fault um, those types of things so uh, things that maybe we've seen before and again uh, we have uh, junction box connections uh, for floor, wall, and ceiling mount, uh, junction boxes, uh, transformers, and all the like. So uh, let's look at uh, look at how, what this looks like as we move through the set of plans. So in this set, we started out with the lighting plan. Again, we don't want to spend too much time there, but we do just want to note how the power is run to those because that is part of the power distribution. So we see we have our light fixture layout, which we'll talk about later, but each fixture has its own circuit tag, uh, which again tells the panel. So it'd be panel LN1 and it's circuit number 22. So uh, again, you should be able to tell from this plan exactly what circuit breaker uh, runs to each light from this plan. So moving up, um, of course, this was the basement lighting plan. This is the first four lighting plans, the same deal, uh, circuit tags for each light, and we'll come back to that. But we want to get to the power plan. So here's the basement power plan. So, you know, all the hatched area is existing, so we're not really worried about that. The single hatch, the double hatch means that it's new, but there's this isn't accessible. It's only the next floor up where it'll be accessible. So, uh, you know, the walkway is above this, but in the basement level, you know, there's nothing to access there. So when we do drill down in here, uh, some things to note. Uh, we do have uh, general power outlets located, you know, strategic locations. Um, we do have some, some ground faults outlets located uh, in the mechanical spaces. Uh, here's a little electrical room that the, was provided for us in the basement. So you can see we have some three, some panels, three different panels. And so this panel here, is actually a relocated panel from uh, from before the, the additions done so they wanted to relocate this panel and the reason for that is a lot of the sanctuary lighting is run out of this and controlled out of this so we relocated this panel uh, down to this closet and then added two new panels for new for new loads and you can see there's a little courtyard area here and so in these areas they put some condensing units the mechanical guys put condensing units and we are feeding these with a wire trough. So we're feeding from an existing panel that's located back over in this area. But uh, you know, instead of setting another panel just for four loads or running four feeders all the way over here, we ran one feeder to this wire trough and then tapped off from this using enclosed circuit breakers to feed these condensing units. Um, uh, these are fed from one of these new panels, so it didn't really make much sense to put a wire trough there when, because these feeders are just coming straight across, so that really wasn't that big a deal. Um, again, we see power connections to exhaust fans, uh, power connections to elevator, uh, an air handler unit, a sump pump you know, in the elevator pit, which is oftentimes forgotten, weatherproof outlets uh, in the elevator equipment room and pit. So 
again, this is a typical basement floor plan and, and how all that stuff would be laid out. So moving up to the next floor, um, you see we do have more accessible area here. And so uh, we tried to place strategically located uh, general purpose outlets. Again, you know, they'll be running vacuums in here. They'll be setting up display tables maybe sometimes and showing different things. Um, you also put power in the bathroom. Uh, and we had another little courtyard back here, and so we put a mechanical unit, and so we need to put an outlet for to work on that. Yeah, no work in here because that's all existing, and we we aren't disturbing that. Uh, here's the little courtyard again, and bathroom. And so nothing really complicated here. Uh, just some mechanical equipment and some general power outlets. So pretty clean, simple uh, design here. Now we do show the existing panel locations. Uh, back here, so if we scroll over into this hatched area, um, you know, the main circuit board, main switch board is back here, and then we have some panels back here that we did utilize. And so for that reason, we do need to show their location, even if they're not doing new work in that area, because the electrical contractor needs to know where they are so he can figure how long his circuit runs or feeder runs will need to be. So as you recall, uh, we had electrical room located about in this area with some new panels so we had to run some feeders all the way from from this existing location to these new new panel locations here so it is important to identify you know all the affected equipment in an existing uh, project so here on the roof uh, we also put some mechanical equipment and again we did the same thing we put wire troughs up here um, because of the length of the run, it didn't make sense to put a panel up there. And so when we did that, we put a schedule for these wire troughs. And so we show what loads are tapped off of each wire trough. And so this helps us to size the feeder to the wire trough, uh, to each one. So you can see here we need at least a 110 amp feeder. Here we need probably an 80 amp feeder. And here at least a 50 or 60 amp feeder uh, to each of these troughs. And uh, then we show what comes from each trough as well. So that's pretty illustrative of how that works. Okay, and as we come down, we see we have our project equipment schedule. So this is where we match up the tags uh, to everything. And uh, again, we just find the tag on the floor plan and then we can see everything we would need to know about each connection. And so um, that works out pretty well. Uh, as, as far as finding out how that works and, and then there's a couple more panel schedules here it's also some uh, power diagrams showing conduit hanging and space requirements uh, did include a couple of panels on here just making use of the space more power uh, panels and so this is um this is kind of interesting this is done many times on existing plans and this is where we're showing the existing panels before construction. And so we kind of do this to set a baseline to show, you know, how much load they're using and to justify the load that we're adding. So in this case, this is the existing power riser diagram. So this is what was there before we started. And these are the panel schedules for those panels and showing what's in them, showing the existing load. So then we go to the next sheet and we see the new or revised diagram and then the revised panels, you know, so we can demonstrate that we're not overloading panels uh, in this situation. So you can see here we keep the existing tag on what's existing and then we show what's new and here are those wire troughs that we talked about earlier for the stuff on the roof and then those condensing units in the courtyard. And here was where we call out and close circuit breakers to satisfy the tap rule uh, for each of those taps. And you can see we pulled some from existing, one from new, and we show kind of the division of where everything is. Here's our feeder schedule that shows, you know, from the originating location to the load served, what it we're running. So each of these lines should have a representation in this feeder schedule. Here's our switchboard schedule. 
And so this shows with the new load, it's a 1600 amp board. Uh, after we add all the new load and the revisions, you can see we're even with 160 uh, future, uh, we're still well below the, the main rating. So we should be, should be good on that. And uh, here we have the new loads uh, on the panels themselves showing what's going on there. So a lot of load calculations and diversity factors applied. Uh, you can see there's all types of kitchens and receptacles and non-continuous loads. And this takes a while to sort all that out and just to make sure and demonstrate that the, we're not overloading anything. And so this is a, a pretty good representation of uh, uh, you know, existing building that we're adding on or doing new work to. Um, so I just wanted to show this as an example in contrast to new construction, you know, the amount of information we show and the amount of effort we take on that.